Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, and today is an exciting day as I'm joined by my newest colleague, Stephen Dickens, who's our new Vice President of Business Development and Senior Analyst. Stephen, welcome. Fantastic. Thank you, Shelley. Great to be part of the team, finally. It feels like it's been a long time coming, so good to be on the show. Absolutely. Well, I'm so glad to have you. Well, in this show today, we are going to talk about news coming out of HPE Discover. It's been a busy week, HPE's amazing event, and we're going to start by talking about HPE's announcement of its new vertically optimized GreenLake cloud services. And Stephen, you're going to tell us about that. Fantastic. So, yeah, really exciting announcements coming out of Discover this week. I was encouraged to see what HPE was doing in this space. I think as they try and find a spot for their offerings in the market, they're going to go increasingly verticalized. They were focusing in on healthcare. They were focusing in on financial services with Lucis. And I really saw this analysis as as kind of a really good way for them to get into this space. You know, obviously with the three big hyperscalers, I think it's going to be interesting to see how some of the other cloud providers and now the other sort of cloud providers are trying to really find their foothold in the marketplace. And that's what I covered in the piece that I wrote. I think the other interesting dynamic here is what we're seeing around hybrid cloud and they, where workloads need to stay on premise as opposed to go to the public cloud. Right. And I think we're going to see more in that space. I know Oracle are doing work in that space right. and some of the others are. But I feel the announcements from HPE were really timely as they look to develop out um, GreenLake and what they're doing with hybrid rather than just a pure public cloud approach. Oh, absolutely. And the other thing I think that is really so attractive is that the solution scales according to demand and it can support, you know, what we've learned over the course of the last year navigating a global pandemic is, you know, the agility and business resilience and being able to to manage costs in a way that makes sense are all sort of top of mind. So, you know, when you can um, scale up or scale down quickly as needed, when you have the option as you do with this offering of paying per user, that's pretty attractive. And, um, you know, so I think that that pay per use model we're going to see more of. And um, so I thought this was a really interesting move, not surprising, you know, as you said, focus on healthcare, financial services, telecommunications makes perfect sense. So I thought yeah, it was I com completely agree, Shelley. I think that what, what was interesting is they've taken that pay per use sort of growth model and verticalized that even and that was right. interesting for me so in the financial services space pay per transaction right. pay per record for the emr stuff they were doing in healthcare with the electronic medical records so i think they're, they're even going one step further than maybe the public cloud vendors are doing so it's not just paper virtual virtual machine or virtual server it was really going to paper transaction and i think organizations are going to find that particularly interesting because that's tagged to their business growth metrics it's tagged to how they think about their business rather than how they're forced to think by some of the traditional providers right. of think about how you pay for this in our terms not in how your business grows. Well, and I think that's what's so important today is, mm -hmm. is really moving away from this is everything is on our terms. It, really, I think today's focus when it can be on what it is you need to help your business grow and succeed. I think that that's a, a huge value proposition. So moving on to some other news that I thought was really interesting, again, touching on GreenLake, um, Solomon Group, which is a sports equipment manufacturer, a large sports equipment manufacturer headquartered in France, selected HPE GreenLake to help meet its sustainability goals. So, and, and there's more than one reason for the selection of GreenLake, but, um, you know, and, and one of those reasons is the ability to provide a, you know, a next gen on-prem cloud environment. And of course, that's a strategic one and, and increasing business agility, which I just talked about and, and increasing data center sustainability, all of those equally relevant. And, and one other factor I think that came into this decision was that this was a strategic move 
to not only meet the company's goals today, but to serve it into the future. And I think that's what we're seeing in a lot of these decision processes. It's not my today solution that makes that that is the only factor. It's my today and into tomorrow solution thinking, you know, beyond. And I think that's important. But what I thought was really interesting here is that um, part of what drove the selection by Solomon Group is that they wanted to be able to rely on HPE GreenLink to help them meet their sustainability goals and reduce their the environmental impact of, of IT and help. They, this company has a particularly ambitious sustainability goal of achieving 30% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025 only for short years from now. Mm -hmm. And so I, so I think that what we're seeing in the market, we're seeing such an increase in the importance of ESG, which is environmental, social, and corporate governance. And this was a, it, and I think that we're going to see more and more of this being a competitive advantage for vendors. You know, we can help you meet these goals. And not only is it a, is it a vendor advantage from the sales standpoint, I think it's a customer advantage when you're using solutions with a goal toward sustainability and really embracing ESG, I think that's a solid value proposition. So I was really glad to see that news. Yeah, I agree, Shelley. I, I was really encouraged by this. I thought it was good that they made this one their sort of primary press releases that came out. I think it shows a focus from the organization, both from Solomon Group, which is to be encouraged, seeing mm -hmm. them be so vocal about their objectives in the ESG space. But also what was interesting for me was how, and I wrote the piece and did and got a chance to sort of go deep on it. Right. What was interesting for me was the focus that HPE were putting on this. So it wasn't lip service. It was a real sort of depth and focus that was encouraging, I thought, how they were looking to position Green Lake, which we just spent some time talking around right. the sort of pay-as-you-grow model. But taking that one step further and really putting a lens on it that says not only can we pay as you go and flexibility and the hybrid model that they're they're talking about so vociferously but also tagging that to esg and tagging that to, to some of the climate goals that their clients have got so i, I thought it was a really strong piece yeah i did as well great job on it <laughs> <laughs> thank you so now let's talk about project aurora well, there's some real depth to this one, Shelley, and we're going to struggle. So I'd recommend uh, the listeners and our viewers go to the show notes and, and take a few moments to, to read through the piece I've put on uh, the Future website on this. But really, there's a lot of depth and a lot of deep engineering. And this came out through um, one of their uh, blog posts. So it was a, and, and it, it took a lot of reading for me to go through this. But really, what they're doing is taking some of the security piece and moving that closer to the silicon. And as I commented in my piece, I think this is really imp important for where the industry is going directionally. I think We've spent a lot of time focusing on ISO 27001 from a compliance point of view. We've talked a lot about um, the software vendors out there in the space who've driven a sort of compliance message and dr driven software-driven approaches. Mm -hmm. But as we did a detailed report on confidential computing, this space is emerging and growing of where security is getting closer to the silicon and the firmware rather than being an afterthought that's bought us a solution afterwards. And I think as we all hear about the ransomware attacks, the cyber attacks, you know, what's going on in the geopolitical environment, I think as the threat landscape changes and becomes more dynamic, the choices that are put in front of CISOs, it's kind of what do I do next? And what I was impressed with in the HPE piece is they're taking that further towards the silicon and doing that in the factory. Right. So that the CISOs don't have to make conscious choices about what tools and how they deploy them. It's kind of always on from an infrastructure point of view because it's built into the hardware. And I think as the landscape gets more scary and we hear more about these attacks, I think that approach is going to be more and more important. Absolutely. Fred and I just did a, a webcast on a, as part of our cybersecurity shorts series. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about is that the, the cybersecurity landscape sort of feels like it's a game of whack-a-mole that never stops. Right. And, you know, you're just, you're just over here trying exactly. as hard as you can. So I do feel like that, um, that zero trust offerings are key 
and um, and continuing to make security, cybersecurity, you know, a primary concern in the enterprise and beyond, I think is something that we have no choice but to embrace. I think it's a dense subject and there's a lot of ground here. I think the piece we did on um, Project Aurora from HPE is worth worth certainly taking a look at and we'll put the link to that in the show notes. Excellent. We've also done an even more in-depth piece on confidential computing and how that whole space is emerging. So that's a further read again. Yeah. But if you're interested in that space, definitely double click on those two assets yeah. and, and you know read further because there's a lot of material here and a yeah. lot of things that people need to be aware of. And we'll include a link to our uh, research report that Stephen mentioned on confidential computing. We'll include a link to that in our show notes as well. So now we're going to wrap up our show with the the last, there were many things that came out of HPE Discover event. We wanted to just highlight some things that caught our attention. And the last thing that caught my attention this week was HPE's acquisition of Determined AI with a view toward accelerating their machine learning capabilities. And so Determined AI is a San Francisco-based startup. They deliver a powerful and robust software stack that's used to train AI models faster, and they use an open source machine learning platform, which is kind of interesting. I didn't realize it was an open source platform until you and I started talking about this. So um, HPE will uh, no doubt combine Determined AI's software solution with its own AI and high-performance computing offerings. And this will en enable machine learning engineers to more easily implement and train machine learning models. And, you know, really the goal is to speed up everything, <laughs> to speed up everything and to deliver more accurate insights from the data. Um, so I thought that that was pretty interesting. The deal size wasn't, uh, wasn't disclosed. Um, but very much this is, you know, a move to strengthen HPE strategic capability in terms of its AI portfolio and its HPC offerings and, and very well suited to be incorporating into the company's as a service ambitions as well. Yeah, I was interested. I mean, for me, when a deal size isn't disclosed, that's always interesting. I'm always yeah. kind of looking for that. So maybe we'll see how big this is as it starts to come through. The other piece that was particularly interesting for me with kind of my background, Shelley, was that this is open source. Right. So it's always when there's a change of ownership, the open source community is kind of thinking what's going on here, what's the community support. It takes a while for that to flow through. So I'm right. going to be watching this from an open source perspective. I'm encouraged by what I read in the, the press release and what the coverage right. got at, at Discover. So that there's not a concern here, but, I, but I'm, it's always one to watch going forward. There's a community that develops around these products. Absolutely. And the community needs to stay engaged as that ownership transition. So I, I think that's something to track and watch for as this goes forward. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. Well, Stephen, thanks for joining me today on our our maiden voyage webcasting <laughs> together. It's awesome to have you as part of our team. And that does it for our coverage of the the you know things that got our interest coming out of the HPE Discover event. And as always, thank you, our audience, for hanging out with us today. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button. If you're listening on whatever streaming channel you use for your podcast, be sure and hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you again next time. <laughs>